The first benchmark for Apple's brand new M5 chip in the MacBook Pro has just dropped guys, and it's pretty impressive. According to an unconfirmed Geekbench 6 result, the M5 chip inside the 14-inch MacBook Pro has achieved a single-core score of 4,263, the highest ever recorded for any Mac or PC processor. That means it's not only beating the M4 Max and M4 Pro, but even topping AMD's latest flagship, the Ryzen 9950X3D. That's a terrible name, but anyways, in short, Apple Silicon just claimed another performance crown. The test also revealed that the M5 chip comes with a 10 core CPU, 4 performance cores and 6 efficiency cores as expected, and managed a multi-core score of 17,862, pinning it roughly 20% faster than the M4 from the previous generation 14-inch MacBook Pro. For perspective, the standard M5 is now faster than the M3 Pro, and it's almost neck and neck with the M1 Ultra found in the Mac Studio. That's a huge leap for what's technically a base MacBook Pro chip, and do remember the GPU leaps are supposed to be even bigger, but this benchmark only shows CPU results. Now based on this, you might be like, oh, I should rush out and buy this. But hold your horses, at the end of the day, the M4 was still plenty fast, and so let's now talk about everything that's new with this M5 MacBook Pro. But before we dive in, if you enjoy in-depth Apple breakdowns like this and want to help out a small channel like mine grow, make sure to subscribe and hit the new hype button down below. It really helps push the video out to more people and I genuinely appreciate every single one of you who supports the channel. Now the M5 MacBook Pro launch was subtle. Apple did not make a huge event out of it, just a press release and event style video, classic October move from them, but the details hidden in the spec sheet tell a bigger story. The M5 chip inside may sound like a small bump from the M4, but Apple's engineers clearly focused on pushing graphics performance this time round. So here's what's new, the base M5 chip is still built on TSMC's 3 nanometer process, the same class of node used in the M4 but it's a more refined third generation version, but GPU gains? That's where things get spicy. Benchmarks show a 35% improvement in real world graphics performance thanks to redesigned GPU cores, higher clock speeds and better efficiency. The best of GPU will come in handy for AI release activities. That said, apart from the GPU and efficiency gains, the M5 MacBook Pro looks and feels identical to the M4 model. The same chassis, same ports, same mini LED panels, same weight, same dimensions. It's almost as if Apple decided to save all their design energy for next year, and honestly that's probably true, because let's face it, the design of the current MacBook Pro dates back to 2021. We've seen small internal tweaks and brighter panels, but the overall look hasn't changed in years. And now that OLED displays are rumored to arrive in 2026, this M5 generation feels like the final chapter for this MacBook design. That's actually kind of fascinating when you think about it. We're looking at the end of an era, the last mini LED MacBook Pro before Apple transitions everything to OLEDs. But here's a question that's been bugging me, will every MacBook Pro get OLED immediately or just the higher end models first? It's entirely possible that the base M6 MacBook Pro, the successor to this one, might not get OLED right away. Apple could easily start with the 14-inch and 16-inch Pro models that house the M6 Pro and M6 Max, leaving the base M6 MacBook Pro with a slightly cheaper mini LED panel for one more year. It's not ideal, but it's a classic Apple move to stagger this rollout. For example, the base MacBook Pro did not get the new design till the M3 generation. So in that context, the M5 MacBook Pro feels like a stopgap, a way to keep the lineup fresh without touching the design or display. Now here's where things get interesting from a value perspective. While the M5 does bring nice GP improvements, the reality is, Older Macs are about to become seriously attractive. The M4 MacBook Pro, which is still incredibly powerful, will likely see a decent price drop both from Apple's refurbished store and from third-party retailers. And then there's the M3 MacBook Pro, which thanks to this release, is going to be an even better deal. You can already find the M3 Pro models for hundreds less, and they're still monsters for most workloads. So if you're thinking of upgrading right now, the M5 MacBook Pro might not necessarily be the smartest choice unless you need that GPU boost. For most, the M3 or M4 would deliver almost the same experience for less money, and that's a kind of quiet win Apple doesn't talk about. But Apple knows exactly what they're doing here, they're not trying to wow the crowd with the M5 MacBook Pro, this is a deliberate incremental upgrade to keep the lineup ticking while they prepare for the bigger transition next year. And if you're wondering, where are the M5 Pro and M5 Max models? Well, those are missing for a very specific reason this time. Apple's not delaying them just for marketing or to spread out their product launches. No, this time it's entirely about architecture. The upcoming M5 Pro and M5 Max chips are expected to feature an entirely new internal design with separated CPU and GPU blocks, 
This is a major change for Apple Silicon. In every M series chip so far from M1 to M4, the CPU and GPU are part of the same unified die design. It's efficient, but also limits flexibility when scaling performance across multiple models. With the new modular approach Apple's working on, the CPU and GPU will essentially become more independent, allowing Apple to mix and match configurations more freely. That means you could potentially choose a MacBook Pro with a maxed out GPU, but a more modest CPU or vice versa, depending on what your workflow prioritizes. For example, video editors and 3D artists might want that top-end GPU power without needing a ton of CPU cores, while developers and engineers might prefer more CPU threads and less GPU horsepower. This change would finally give Apple the kind of scalability that companies like AMD and Nvidia have been perfecting for years. It's also smart to move from a production standpoint. Separating the CPU and GPU blocks means Apple can optimize yields, control thermals better, and offer a wider range of SKUs without having to design entirely new chips from scratch. It's more modular, more cost effective, and more adaptable as we move deeper into the AI computing era. That's why the M5 Pro and the M5 Max aren't here yet, because they're not just speed bumps, they're brand new chip designs, and Apple's taking the time to get them right. Expect those to arrive sometime in early 2026, and let me clarify that the M5 Pro and Max are going into the existing chassis, the other transition will happen in late 2026, and will feature M6 chips. So coming back to this M5 model, it's kind of caught cool in the middle. On one hand, you've got clear GP progress, and I can't complain they've made this model faster while keeping it at the same price. On the other hand, you've got a design that's nearing the end of its life cycle with better value options just below it. If you're already using an M1 or M2 MacBook, then sure, the M5 might feel like a tempting upgrade. But if you have an M4, even the M3, I'd say hold off. The gains aren't big enough to justify the spend, and with OLED and modular chips right around the corner, patience could really pay off. Battery life interestingly remains about the same, up to 24 hours of video playback on the 14 inch. The efficiency of the M5's cores offset the slightly high GP power draw, so it balances out, but nothing dramatically better than the M4 generation. And as predictable as this release might seem, it's also reassuring in a way. Apple's keeping its cadence steady, annual chip updates, predictable performance increases, while gradually paving the path for major hardware shifts, it's very Apple in how methodical it is. If anything, once the OLED models launch, these M5 models will become a better deal, since I'm pretty sure OLED's gonna result in a price increase, and these would have dropped in price by then, so while the M5 MacBook Pro seems like a not so attractive option now, it may be later once it eventually becomes cheaper. So to sum up, the M5 MacBook Pro is faster, cooler, and smarter, especially when it comes to graphics and AI workloads, but it's not the must upgrade moment Apple sheep might have been hoping for. It's more of a strategic refresh, bridging the gap to what's coming next. And I think that's the best way to view it, not as a disappointment, but as a sign of where Apple's going. The modular M5 Pro and M5 Max chips really define how performance scaling works in the MacBook Pro range, and OLED will finally deliver that visual leap everyone's been waiting for. Until then, if you're buying now, look to the past, not the present. The M3 and M4 MacBook Pros are about to drop in price, and those machines will have years of life ahead. That's where the real value lies right now. So if you're hunting for performance on a budget, don't let the M5 hype get you too excited just yet. The best MacBook deals are going to be the ones this release quietly makes cheaper. But what do you think? Is Apple playing it too safe with the M5 MacBook Pro? Or do you think these GPU and AI improvements are enough to justify it? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to subscribe and hit the hype button. It really helps a small channel like mine reach more Apple fans like you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.